Recently, I've had a bit of a predicament. I have been getting harassed. Harassed by rabid Hyperland users. Just on my Discord alone, I have had probably at least a hundred mentions just telling me to cover Hyperland. That's just on the Discord. There are other platforms that people have been asking the exact same thing. Now, I considered covering Hyperland maybe like two or three months back. Now, this is very beta software. So at the time, it was really buggy. I was not going to do a video on it then because when I opened up a window, everything started flashing. It was really annoying and it just didn't seem like a good time to do a video on the software. So I gave it a couple of months to sort of smooth itself out and get to the point where it's actually usable because the dev is really active. And I've given it a few months. And you know what? It's pretty good. Now, besides the wallpaper, this is not the way that Hyperland looks out of the box. One of the things is it doesn't ship with a bar. You're expected to go and use another bar like Waybar or whatever bar you want to be using. So Hyperland is a dynamic tiling window manager with its compositing built on WL Roots. So being WL Roots, you're going to get the protocol extensions that come along with using that. So most of the software that works on something like Sway or River is also going to work here except for the things that rely on, obviously, the Sway API. Now, it's not just any version of WL Roots. It's actually built on a bundled Git version of WL Roots. So it's basically going to be as up-to-date as you can pretty much get with that. Now, from my experience, once it became stable, it's been relatively stable after that. So being a dynamic tiler, there are different layouts available. By default, it's going to be using what it calls the dwindle layout. This is basically the spiral layout you would see on something like BSPWM. Most tilers are going to have this as an option. It also has the option of a master stack. Now, I'm going to get more into this a bit later, but the Hyperland config is located in .config slash hyper and then hyperland.com. And it's broken down mostly into different sections. So you have the input section, you have the general section, decoration, and things like that. If we want to go and change the layout, inside of the general section, spaces don't matter here, this is all about just formatting. Inside of the general section, layout equals, and then a dwindle or master. So let's go and change this over to master and see how it looks. Now, one neat thing about this is the config automatically reloads. So now everything's automatically swapped into the master stack layout. And from my experience, pretty much anything you want to go and set will go and work with that automatic reload. Now there is a really neat feature with the way that splitting works. So let's go and open up an application here. And if I have my mouse on the left-hand side of the window, it's going to split to the left-hand side. If my mouse is on the right-hand side, it's going to split to the right-hand side. This is something you can disable if you don't want it, but I think that is really cool. The only issue with that is it doesn't let you decide whether the split is going to be horizontal or vertical. So this split here is always going to be splitting like this. No matter where my cursor is located, it is always going to split in that direction. But you can decide whether it's going to be on the top or the bottom. Now I really like mouse control for controlling my window size. But it can be a little bit funky. So if I go and try to resize this window here, sometimes that happens. I don't know why it happens, but sometimes it happens. It could be something I've configured wrong. I have no idea. One thing this could do really well with is a really fleshed out default configuration in the vein of something like i3 or Sway. Now there is a default configuration file and I would highly, highly recommend you go and use it. But it's more of a bare bones, get things sort of just basically working config rather than something that is you know, going to give you a good default experience. And more inline documentation explaining what each of the options being set are actually doing. Or better yet, if you don't want to do that, linking to the wiki. So above each of these sections, include the wiki page where it actually explains it, because that's where most of the documentation for Hyperland actually exists. This is the Hyperland wiki. And overall, it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Everything that you want to know is at least listed in the wiki. Some of the things aren't really explained, 
Uh, for example, one of the things is a thing called pseudo tiling. And the option to enable pseudo tiling, the description is enable pseudo tiling. What is pseudo tiling? I've never heard of this. And in the FAQ, my workspace 2, 3, or any other is like bugged. You did the below unknowingly. Which below? There's a lot of things below here. All of these points in here have a link next to them. So link the point that you're actually talking about. And the last thing I want to mention about the wiki is it desperately, desperately needs a version selector. So if you're using a version that's one version behind on Hyperland, because this thing is in such massive development and new things are being added all the time, you might go to the wiki, not realize you're running a slightly out of date version, and none of the options that exist in the wiki work in your version of the application. This is something that actually happened to me. I was trying to do something, I think it was with the dwindle layout and the way that you can move windows around had suddenly changed. This is a problem because on distros like Arch, you can expect that the latest version is going to be available. But if you ever expect Hyperland to exist anywhere besides a rolling release, you need to make sure people know what version of the documentation they're looking at. I think one simple phrase describes Hyperland incredibly well. It is the embodiment of doing really cool things before worrying about the fundamentals. So one of the big drivers for using Hyperland is the customization. Not just your typical customization like, hey, you can have different key bindings. Or you can configure your monitors. Hey, do you want to have window rules? There's window rules. There's different layouts. You also have things like transparency, blur, drop shadow, which you don't see very often, rounded corners also don't see very often, even things like anti-aliasing. And you've probably spotted it throughout this video, but animations as well that work pretty smoothly. So when I open up a window, I get an animation. When I close a window, there's an animation. You might notice there's like a fade in with that as well. And then like fades out the background. I think they look really cool. There's animations swapping between your desktops and the animations can all be customized as well. So we go to the animations page here. There is, when it eventually loads, you can like customize the animation timings exactly how you want it to look. And you can get rid of the animations altogether if you don't like them. And hey, if you want to, you could even set up things like gesture controls, how many fingers to use for gesture, and all of this fun stuff, which I think is really, really cool. But the fundamentals are rightly fundamental. One of those fundamentals is the way that key bindings work. So usually with a key binding system, first thing you can do is set a mod key used across all of the bindings. Now, there is a thing called main mod, but main mod, I found out, is a completely separate thing. So for all of my bindings, I have to go super, 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 super. If I wanted to go and switch over to alt, I would then have to go and manually swap all of them over. Storing that in a variable makes that much, much simpler. The second thing is usually with a binding system, you can set your mod to be anything you want. Here, all of the mod keys are bound to specific variables. Now, these variables do cover the things that you generally want to be using. So it's not that big of a deal, but I would like the ability to set any mod that I want. But because of the way the mod keys work where they're bound to these variables, if you want to do something like super plus shift like you would write in Sway, it's super shift. Or you want to do super and alt, it's super alt. Now, one thing the documentation does not mention is you actually can put a space here. Why is that not, like, made very evident in the documentation? And there is this one-off mention of using an underscore. Both of these are much better ways of separating things and should be put forward to the user to make sure they know they're actually available. Now, this issue is going to be addressed in the next version, but until I pointed it out, this comma separated format wasn't actually comma separated. So a comma separated format, you only care about the commas as your delimiter, but it was caring about spaces as part of words. So something like exec with a space here doesn't work because it treats it like space exec, which is not a thing that exists. Now, it's great the dev is going around and quickly addressing these problems, but this is what I mean by it's the embodiment of doing cool things before the fundamentals. 
worrying about the fancy animations and cool transitions before worrying about your comma separated format actually working or worrying about your mod keys actually being documented so people know how they can properly use them. In the same vein, a lot of the configuration is very developer centric. The reason why it's using this format is because this is much easier to parse than something more readable like Sway does, for example. And my favorite example of this is the way that colors work. So this right here, this is a color. Now, can you tell me how to read this color? You can probably guess it's a hex value considering that zero X is at the front. Why you need to have zero X there when you know it's for a color setting? I don't know. That can just be scrapped off and it'd be exactly the same. But what is the order that you actually read the symbols here? Because it's not RGBA. What it is, is ARGB. I have looked at more software than a good portion of my subscriber base combined, and I have never seen, firstly, ARGB. Secondly, this format for a color. My second favorite one is the way that monitor transformations work. So you'll notice here a three and a one. This represents the direction we're going to be flipping the monitor because I've got two vertical monitors here. What does three and one mean? I don't know. Let's go and check the wiki. So three is WL underscore output underscore transform underscore 270. And then one is the same but 90. Now, from what I've seen, it does not seem like you are able to actually use these variable names. So you have to go and use the like the number, which is firstly not clear, and secondly, right, why does the documentation say all of this? If you're going to do it in this dumb way, just say transform 270, or transform flipped, or transform flipped 90. I don't care about this WL output. It does not mean anything to me. But better yet, Use the names, transform 90, transform 180, transform 270. Make it much clearer. Without even looking at the code, I can almost certainly tell you why it's like this. This in the code is represented as either an enum or a list or some other sort of element which you will look up by using a number. And by taking that number from the config, it will then go and grab what it needs to do from that element and then apply it to the screen. And this is the same reason why your colors are in this format, because you're using some sort of color parser that works in this format, rather than using hash and then the thing like a user would expect. But all that being said, Hyperland is still in hyper development. All of this stuff can still change. There can still be more of a focus on improving the configuration and making it better for the user to actually work with. This is very much beta software, and if I wanted to, I could spend all day talking about bugs. You might have noticed that every time I went into a web browser, my cursor was like 10 times as big as it should be. Yeah, that just happens. I don't know why it happens. It also happens in random QT applications. It doesn't happen in GTK. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. And none of these flaws are fundamental architecture flaws. They can absolutely be fixed. And in a couple of years, if Hyperland is still going strong and still being developed and still being stable, I might have to go and recommend it, or I might even have to use it myself. But for right now, I'm going to be sticking with Sway. But I can totally see why someone might get really into Hyperland. There is a lot to configure, there is a lot to rice, a lot more ricing than something like Sway, for example, and you could spend weeks and weeks configuring it to be exactly the way that you like it. We kind of need something else in the same vein as Wayfire. Sure, Wayfire is cool, but there are other things that can be experimented with as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use Hyperland? Do you even know what Hyperland is? Had you ever heard of it before this video? I would love to know. And if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of, I realize I can't do my hotkeys, uh, these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got my podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out.